Hi guys and welcome back to the giant world of tiny things. My name is Max and today I'm going to show you how to use ambient light to create macro images like these. And as pretty much always with photography, we need to balance various factors in order to produce great results. The two main aspects in this situation are shutter speed and image quality. We don't want our images to look grainy, yet we want them to be sharp and free of motion blur. To achieve this, we need to create a situation where we can get away with slower shutter speeds without sacrificing image quality. Therefore, my first tip is to really be aware of your body posture to make sure that you are as a person, as a human tripod, as stable as you can be. Think about your posture, use your body in a way that really supports the camera well and that allows you to hold it as steady as you can. If your environment allows you to, try to find support within the environment that you're shooting in. If you're in a park that might be a tree that you can lean against or it might be a bench that you can sit on or a chair that you can use or if you're low to the ground you can and even just use your own knee as sort of a tripod to rest your elbow on and then anchor your camera tightly against your face and that gives you two anchor points that will just help you to stabilize the camera and get away with slower shutter speeds. Of course you can also use a tri or monopod if that fits your personal style of shooting. Even though it isn't necessarily my personal cup of tea to use and move around with a tripod in the field, I have had great experiences in the past with a tripod with a semi-fast ball head because that provides you with enough stability to hold your camera steady and yet allows you to move your perspective and your camera around on the go. My next tip is a little bit more specific and really only applies to photographing insects. But if you're looking to photograph insects with ambient light only in the field, then this one is just for you. And that tip is to rise and shine early and take advantage of the cooler temperatures in the early morning hours. Because at that point in time, insects have cooled down overnight and they are at a rather low body temperature, which means that they can't move as fast and that they can't be as skittish as they'd like to, giving you a much better chance at approaching them with your macro lens and at getting a decent photo of them and also at avoiding motion blur because they're not gonna beat their wings, they're not gonna run away, you really can get away with slow shutter speeds at this point in time and that can be huge, especially for skittish specimens such as long-legged flies or damselflies or dragonflies. These insects really can best be photographed draft in the early morning hours. And that leads us right to my next tip regarding the light itself. When you're choosing to photograph an ambient light, then you don't really get to shape the light as you would with a flash. Instead, you only get to pick the lighting situation that you want to photograph in. Meaning that you really need to think of and be aware of the lighting that you want for your image and how it will affect the result. For example, if you want soft and even light, the best situation to get this is on overcast days or on sunny days in partial shade or shaded situations. However, if you're looking to get away with really fast shutter speeds, for example, if you're looking to photograph an insect in flight, then your best bet might be a bright sunny day when the sun is high up in the sky and provides you with the most light and also makes it the easiest to focus on your subject as quickly as you can because those moving subjects are not going to just hover in the air unless you're photographing a hoverfly that is, but you know what I mean. There really isn't a hard and fast rule on how to use ambient light and how to use those lighting situations, but at the same time you really want to think about the light and how it's going to affect your photography. 
Another great tip that kind of goes along with this is to be aware of the surfaces and of the ground that you're photographing on, especially when you're photographing low to the ground. For example, in the situation that you can see on screen right now, I had the choice if I wanted to photograph my subjects over a grassy ground or over a bright white concrete ground. And I went for the concrete ground because that would reflect the sunlight coming from above much better and making the lighting much more even because the light is coming from above but at the same time it's being reflected from below and that kind of evens it all out. Of course you can also bring your own reflectors or even just a piece of white paper or aluminum foil into the field to kind of supplement this effect and to create it on your own. My last and probably most valuable tip of this whole video is to utilize the continuous shooting mode of your camera or if your camera has it, the high speed continuous shooting mode. Not only does shooting a burst of images rather than a single shot help you to maximize your chances of getting things right and nailing focus, but it also helps you to avoid handshake introduced motion blur. Watch this. Did you notice how pressing the shutter button just caused the camera body to move a tiny bit? Well, it might not seem like a whole lot, but in terms of macro photography, it's definitely enough to ruin your handheld macro images, especially when you're trying to get away with slower shutter speeds. However, let's look at it once again and observe how the camera and my hands will stabilize again by the time the fourth or fifth shot rolls around. You notice how the camera is perfectly stable after just a few shots. That means that by this point in time I can get away with actually shooting at a 20th or a 30th of a second and receiving decent and tech sharp images. This is a technique that I really grew to love over the past years, pretty much ever since I discovered it. And I've been using it not only for ambient light macro photography, but also for wildlife photography with longer lenses and pretty much when shutter speed is a critical factor I try to apply this technique and usually with fantastic results and with that being said I really hope that you enjoyed today's video that you found a couple useful tips in it and that you were able to draw a bit of inspiration for your own macro photography from this video and from my tips if you did please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and leave me a thumbs up to support my work and to help me produce more content like this I'm looking forward to seeing you in another video on this channel sometime soon. Until then, stay creative, keep shooting and have a good one. Cheers!